I welcome you for our first webinar for this year, Digital Payment Solutions for Business. We have passed and are now passing through great turmoil, but hopefully this, there will be a more positive period coming in the coming months. The fact that many things could not be done physically during COVID-19 has surely accelerated many changes. The most important thing being a greater role of digitalization into our everyday lives. This means that many businesses have had to adapt in order to survive. Add to this the directive of the Central Bank of Malta, which came into place on the 1st January of this year, which limits the use of checks and bank drafts. I would like to thank our partners, Bank of Valletta, who will provide an overview of the solutions being offered by the bank on digital payment systems. Uh, special thanks goes to our speakers and panelists, Kenneth Faruja, Chief Retail Banking Officer at Bank of Valletta, and Tonya Naudi, Head, Multi-Channel and Payment Solutions at Bank of Valletta. I would like to thank them in advance for their contribution. All of those who are participating on our online platform, please feel free to post your comments and questions, which will be uh, answered by our panelists during the dedicated question and answer session. If you want, please feel free to post also on our social media, and we will take also the questions from there. To this end, we hope that you will find this webinar useful. I now kindly invite Kenneth Farunja to make his introductory remarks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Borch, and uh, please allow me to thank as well the Gozo Business Chamber for giving us the opportunity to address the Chamber and its members. Uh, we are delighted to have this opportunity to speak about something very, very topical. And uh, I think digital payments today, particularly within the context of you know, the COVID pandemic that we have gone through, uh, has become a subject of interest to many. Right, And I say to many, not only from a business perspective, because of the efficiency with which um, the digital payments can introduce, you know, cost reductions to businesses, but even more so, you know, we've seen as well uh, during this COVID environment, quite a number of, of retail customers, of personal customers that have shifted their preference um, of payment from traditional methods of, of cash and, and checks to the use of cards, uh, to the use of mobile phones today with the tokenization of cards to pay for goods and services. Undoubtedly, if I look back at the state of play at national level, the amount of checks issued in the local economy ranked Malta first, uh, first in Europe, for the wrong reasons, however, uh, because obviously the amount of checks that we used to issue per capita was, was astronomical, right? And uh, clearly, I think all the banks um, were making a significant effort to really sway and change the uh, preference of, of businesses and the preference of, 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 of retail customers from the use of checks to the use of digital, digital channels. Undoubtedly, the bank has invested significantly in, in, in this regard to facilitate the way through which businesses uh, in particular can process payments, uh, both payments which are intended to pay the salaries of their employees, but equally so payments which are intended, you know, to settle um, any dues to, to, to suppliers. And the ability as well to, re to receive payments from their clients in a digital, in a digital uh, manner. If I look back, I am pleased to note, and I think this is, uh, I think, one of the few benefits of the pandemic, that we've seen a massive uh, reduction in checks from the business community in Malta. And when I say massive, I can share this statistic with, uh, with you and your members that we've seen a 55% reduction in the number of checks that are issued by, that were used to be issued by the business community in January, 2020, when compared to the number that they are being issued today. We still have room to uh, increase um, the shift from checks to uh, digital payments. Um, I believe, and I don't want to take the wind out of the sails of, of my colleague, Tonya, um, <laughs> but who, who will share with you um, the ease of processing payments. But as I said earlier, you know, the cost benefits, 
cost management benefits that shifting to digital will, ex will extend to, to clients. Clearly, we are all aware uh, on the pains of processing checks, you know, apart from having to fill in the check manually, send the to type a covering letter, um, you know, send the check by post, incur postage costs, and you're reconciling those checks. Some checks are lost. Some checks end up sometimes being being stolen or, or misused and misrepresented across the counters of the bank. So, you know, checks do not come without pains. I mean, checks do extend, in my view, significant pains to the to, 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 to businesses. And when one compares the time that one employs in using checks as a means of payment with the degree of ease with which you can pay supplier in one go through your internet banking um, 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 channel. And even today you can settle uh, transactions through our mobile banking channel. It's incomparable. And uh, you know when you really put the numbers on the table and if you do a bit of a time and motion and say, okay, how much time do I spend, my sub spend in processing checks, in sending out check payments? What is the cost of that process? And you compare that with the cost of processing digital payments, customers automatically would want to shift to digital. The process is not at all laborious, as my colleague Tonya um, will, will, will highlight. There is a degree of ease with which to process payments through digital channels. We do provide through our payments team, you know, all the necessary support to clients that would want to shift to digital payments to affect that, that transition, because ultimately it's beneficial for the bank because the bank, obviously, the pains of the bank is that we have to deploy cashiers day in, day out to encash checks for their customers. It also addresses a degree of efficiency in, in paying employees or paying suppliers because they are directly credited, you are directly crediting them in their account. So they don't need to go to the bank or send their employees to deposit that check in the bank or use ATMs. You know, so really, it's, and truly, it's a win win uh, situation. And I think in this day and age, and even if I look at some jurisdictions abroad, particularly Scandinavian countries, checks don't exist anymore. <laughs> so in some countries, you know, checks are not really uh, sort of, you know, utilized as a means, as a means, as a means of payment. I will stop here. Again, <laughs> I wish to thank the chamber for um, the time that they have extended to us. Uh, I wish to assure the chamber that we will provide any form of support that the members may require in you know, exploring the merits of moving payments to, to digital. So that's an open invitation that will, will definitely be supportive of their transitioning to the digital age. I leave it in the hands of uh, my colleague Tonya to share uh, with the members the various channels and the means of payment when it comes to digital. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Kenneth. Um, I'm going to share my presentation now. I hope you're seeing my- Yes, we can, it's okay. Yes, okay, thank you very much. So let us start. I mean, Kenneth gave a very good overview, um, introduction of, of digital payments and the move of the bank to um, entice customers to move to digital channels. So what I'm gonna do throughout this presentation is mostly, let's call it an information session and uh, present to you ways and means of using certain payment services. What is the aim? The aim is to share information, but mostly also to give you the advantages of reduced um, payment services. And you, you, in this way, pay less, less bank charges to actually make the same payments. Um, uh, customers have throughout these two years, let's put it like that, have started using more online, online um, channels, especially internet banking and mobile banking. So I'm going to focus on those two um, digital channels, apart from the fact that we have others like um, ATM as well, ATMs as well. So um, what is the customer's expectations? We need to change. And when we say we, it means us as banks and also customers. We need to um, work in a different way. Consumers' expectations have evolved 
And we see the shift to e-commerce, contactless payments as well, which became very, very um, popular. Even when you go to a shop to, to purchase, the first thing they say is, are you going to pay by contactless? It's not card, contactless. So to see that the word contactless has become the norm now as well when we, when we talk about online payments. Now, um, going back to the digital transformation within Bank of Valletta, um, we have started our digital transformation two decades ago when we've introduced internet banking and then following that mobile banking. So our aim was always from the, from the start to give and try to ensure a customer and seamless experience. Now, um, as I said, I'm going to deep dive into different functionalities within internet banking later on into mobile banking and show you some type, some payment services, which I think you will, be, you, you will find useful in order to make your life easier and pay less charges, as I, as I said, because that's the focus as well. Why not pay less bank charges? So internet banking, this is um, the, the dashboard, so to speak, where when you log in to internet banking, you, in, you, you need the user credentials, your user ID, and then you need um, a software or a hardware token. Why? Now I explain later, but to actually access your personal, uh, personal accounts. So um, in reality, the bank offers three ways, three methods of accessing internet banking. You have through the mobile, which is the software token, and it is under the BOV signatures. Then you have the white small token, okay? And then we have recently launched a new token for businesses as well. And I can give you the differences between the two. So charges, mobile software token, free of charge. This one token, this, this single token is 10 euros per annum. This is 15 euros per annum. The difference, why? Why? Because with this, the business, we call it, we, we, we call it the business um, security. You can, you can also authorize up to five payments in one single transaction. Now, as you know, with the changes of Payment Services Directive 2 and the way you have to authenticate yourself and also sign a transaction, that has changed going back in 2000, in September 2019. How did it change? Just to refresh, when, when you actually sign a payment, you need to dynamically sign a payment using the signature too. And this is by also including the, benefit, the amount of the payment and then the five last five digits of the IBAN, of the beneficiary IBAN. And that secures that you know actually that you are going to transmit you're going to transfer, um, for example, 100 euros to that specific beneficiary. And there, through the secure code, you will generate a, a, a code is generated, which secures that, um, that, that transaction being um, authorized. So um, apart from that, um, may I just add, because I forgot to tell you, um, this, this security also, you can use the Coronto image. And by Coronto image, obviously, it makes life easier for you to authorize um, the payment. Now, um, okay, one of the factors, one of the um, things, I'm going to start giving you some tips as well for those things that you might ignore on internet banking. So I'm just going to remind you of them, please do look into your messages. The messages are there um, as an important way of us as a bank passing on certain important information as well. So let's say if we're going to, and this is what we're going to do, an upcoming change to our terms and conditions, and we will be communicating 
in very, very short period of time, these changes, we will send you a message through our internet banking. And we're going to inform you that specific changes will take place. So it is very important that you have a look at your inbox of, of, of internet banking. Um, and another thing, the messages are stored there for 60 days. And that gives you ample time that if, for example, you want to save that particular message, then you can do that as well to ensure that if you want to, for future reference, to go back to it, then you have a means of, of, of uh, reading through that particular message. This is a dashboard, the dashboard of internet banking, where you can actually view your accounts, um, transfer between accounts, it's, a matter, it's very simple. You just click on and, and carry out the particular um, transaction you wish to do. You can also, um, this as I told you, you view your account balances, recent transactions. You can also print because um, although we try not to print, but you have that ability to do that. And um, uh, you can also, as I said, view your statements. You can open a new account, move money between accounts, etc. So this is the beginning of what internet banking can offer. Now, in relation to payments, you have, you want to, as businesses, you have two, two, two forms of different types of so-to-called payments. You either want to make a payment or as you want to collect funds from your customers. So let us first focus on the collection of funds. And there we have payment services can, that can assist you. For example, you can pay a bill by using um, um, for your customers can pay you um, through the, pay, the bill payment facility. So you can, um, when you make, a, from, the, from the side of the customer, if I want, let's say, to pay a utility bill or a subscription, I can go to my internet banking, choose the, the company, the utility company or, or, or the creditor, so to speak, and then make a payment and I pay. And it's the same thing. You can set that up and you can set it up by sending us an email on paymentsbusiness at bov.com. The email is payments with an S, business at bov.com. And you can request uh, for us to set you up using the bill payment facility. The ease of use of this is this. First of all, you don't have any setup costs. You have a minimal transaction cost of 47 cents per transaction, but you get in return also um, a daily report where you can use it for reconciliation purposes. And that saves time because reconciliation is a big headache. So the automation of reconciliation will help you also reduce your operational costs within your company. Now, um, one thing is that the bill payment facility you, you can use it for payments related to BOV to BOV. However, we also have another payment service, the SEPA Direct Debits as well, which you can, which you can also set up, all right? Again, you can contact us. Again, I, I'm going to repeat the email so that to make sure that maybe you didn't um, write it down, you, do, you will do it um, right now. Payments business at BOV.com. And my team, I've got a team of, of 10 here and we will be able to assist you easily with any, any queries you, you, um, you, you need. So going back to SEPA Direct Debit, SEPA Direct Debit, um, the advantage of it is that you are in control. I want to collect funds on the 14th of February. So I can batch my payments, upload a file to internet banking, and you will get paid, you will get paid for those 10, 20 collections on the 14th of February. Now to set it up, you need 
um, a file format um, uh, to, set, to set it up, but we will guide you through. I'm not going into the actual nitty gritty of how, how the setup is, but um, my team will guide you through the whole process with testing, etc. The good news is that um, it is all, only 12 cents. You, will you are charged 12 cents per collection and um, you get reports. You get reports on any rejected items. Um, you, you have control over the, the funds that are deposited into your account, etc. And you can reach more clients because obviously it stands to reason, not all clients bank with BOV. I mean, there are other clients who bank with other banks, even within the SEPA. May I say that it's not only for local banks. So if I have a bank account in Germany or a bank account in Italy, I can use my IBAN, okay? And you can actually set up a direct debit mandate with your client using that particular IBAN. So that's the ease of, of, of use of this service. Now, sending orders, sending orders as well. I mean, uh, um, you can tell your client to set up a sending order. A sending order, um, the client will set it up through his internet banking portal and on a monthly basis or whatever, will be able to pay, to pay you so much. So, so this is, these are different types of payment services dedicated literally to collect the funds. Now I'm going to move on to actually, this is, um, I've just explained the E, so um, uh, I can skip through, but this is um, a visual of what you see. So your company will be listed in one of these, um, of this list. And you also have dedicated four fields, specific fields. For example, let me just give you a, an example, a business, who runs um, uh, a minibus service. Okay, so um, minibuses collecting students from, uh, from different schools. So the student is, is assigned a student number, for example. So there you can, to make it easy for your customer to pay you, you have, um, uh, you, you have the, the student number and you can actually um, uh, actually include that number. So I'm paying, I'm paying for my son or for my daughter um, uh, the, the, monthly, the monthly fee. So I just place the, the, the number and then the amount and I can pay off. So just to, I'm just trying to show you the ease of use of this, of this service. Another thing which I'm seeing, and I don't want to forget um, communicating this, the customer can also um, save it as a template. So, you know, I mean, if it is a repetitive payment, it doesn't need to create the whole, uh, the whole payment instruction um, from scratch, but um, turn to that template and just change the date and maybe, let's say, the amount. Now, let me turn to the making of the payments. And I'm going to first talk about and explain in detail the different types of payments that you can actually make through internet banking. First and foremost, single payments. You have SEPA, non-SEPA payments, different currencies, USD, GPP, different currency payments, same day, normal value dated um, with a one day value, future dated payments, you all, all these type of payments you can make through internet banking. Now, certain, um, you, we have only one screen for, the, for, for making a payment. And depending on the type of payment, you have to fill certain mandatory fields. Why? For example, when making a SEPA payment, Although which are the most important identifiers is the IBAN, that is the most important, the IBAN, the beneficiary name, the amount. You don't need to include, for example, the, the big code because that is generated automatically when validations within our systems are carried out. This is to explain the ease 
of views of making a simple SEFA payment. Then you have other complex payments where, especially if you, for example, uh, making a non-SEPA payment, you will require to insert the beneficiary address. It is very important. Um, tip for you, try and avoid including any special characters like commas, exclamation marks, open, open inverted commas, etc. Please try and avoid them. Be simple. Just type in the complete beneficiary address. Some other payments, for example, if we talk about um, uh, USD payments, for example, you need to ensure that the full beneficiary address is completed. Some other payments require purpose code, sort code, etc. These type of special requirements um, are not really BOV specific, but according to the type of payment, best practices according to the type of payment you are actually making. So it is very important that you um, take note. Now I show you in, I, I, I believe I have it in, in, one of my, in one of my slides. The additional information that we insert there to, to um, ensure that you will key in the correct information when making the actual payment, depending on the type of payment that you are, that you are making. Also, I must say um, that before you actually authorize the payment, you have a so-called forecast. So you, you will actually even know um, the charges that you are being going to be levied on that particular payment that you are, that you are going to make. Try always to use, although the PSD2 enforces you to do that, but try and use um, the shared type of, 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 of charges because less charges will be applied to you and ensure that you have the correct details, especially the IBAN. I must stress the fact that the IBAN is very important. A correct IBAN is very important. I know that we have the longest IBAN, unfortunately, 31. Um, characters padded with seven zeros. But if you need to check whether your IBAN is correct, um, we do have um, an IBAN validator. Other, I mean, it's a common practice that even other banks um, do so. So you can actually um, get the, the correct information. Also, at the end of once you've made the payment, you are also prompted with warning signs, as I'm showing you in this slide, if you have any, any wrong information inputted. So there's a number of validations that take place to ensure that finally the, the, the payment reaches its ultimate um, beneficiary. Right, this is what I was talking to you about previously, it's the additional information. Take note of the additional information and the text um, I, I know that sometimes reading is, uh, is time consuming, but um, it is good to read and then to ensure that your payment is actually delivered to the, to the end beneficiary. I have also made, it, made a note here um, regarding uh, very quick, in fact, when you access your internet banking, at the bottom, you have also the terms and conditions, which are very important, and that there are there is a lot of information there, um, which also guides you as to cutoff times, um, delivery of, of of the types of payments that that we make, etc. So it is worth um, having a look at those, and also a quick link to to the charges and fees that we have on 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 payments. Now, my favorite topic <laughs> is the batch payments. Batch payments. Why is my favorite topic? Because the, the, the ease of making payments, um, they're cheap. I mean, a single payment um, within SEPA up to 1,000 costs one euro. Over 1,000 costs four euros. Batching payments up to 1,000 costs only 15 cents. Over four, over one thousand costs only seventy five cents. So what's what's the trouble? I mean, batch payments is is, is the easiest solution. Um, our website, 
if you click on the business, as I'm showing you right here, and then we list products, it's the first one, salaries and batch payments. You click on that. And once you click on that, you have a landing page of what we offer. We have the salary icon. So you can click on if you want to apply for salary batch payments, click on that. If you want to apply for other payments within SEPA, you click on the middle one. And then we also very recently added the non sepa payments. Um, the process of the process of um, of of actually applying for this for this um, service. Once you click on the let's say you want to batch your salary payments. So there is a very, very short application form. It's a simple application form. And once you click submit, that application comes to my team. And we start processing that, that application. We will carry out um, checks and um, checks on the account to see that the CCD is correct. Any, any pending items within, within um, for the account purposes and reviews are being settled. Um, we send you. Um, a one pager agreement for you to sign and some other other um, documents and then you'll be able to um, carry out testing. Testing is done because we share with you a file format. Now the simplest of file formats is this one. It is Excel based and it's called Office Pay. So as you're seeing, because I've included an example, all you need to do is capture a reference number. You give a reference number. The currency is euro, the beneficiary name, beneficiary IBAN, simple, simple salary, because that is what you're, 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 you're batching salary, and the charges are always shared. Now, just to remind you, when you batch your salary payments, the charge is 12 cents per payment. And um, you can, um, when we say batch, you need at least six payments, six salary payments to batch, um, to, to include in a batch file. So all it is, is it's an Excel. As you're seeing, it's an Excel. The difference is that when you then um, save it on your desktop in a file, you will need to um, save it in a specific format. I am not going to go into the nitty gritties of how you obtain as a code, et cetera. Um, once you start the application and we process it, we will guide you completely throughout the process until, the, until testing is carried out and it is successful. And then once you have all your access rights, et cetera, then you're, ready to go. Now, um, there are other type of file formats that you can use, depending on the business, depending on the data you want, the, the richness, the, 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 the amount of data you wish to use even for, let's say, reconciliations and other purposes within your corporate, within your business. So this is the simplest one, then, I, then we can also share with you the SEPA file formats in XML, for non sepa as well, we have um, uh, proprietary files of Bank of Valletta, which also help you and assist you in batching payments. So it's not only this type of file, but obviously um, I'm trying to be simple and give you the easiest um, format that you can use. Now, when you come to upload the file, you have, um, if you can see at the bottom, unupload file, encrypted upload file, unencrypted. So depending on whether you're going to encrypt your own file with a password or not, you will be able to upload the file through by clicking on the title. It is just attaching the file and processing, just including the, the the total amount of the file and the date you wish to have the file processed. So it is a simple look at the bottom of, of shown, I've shown what you need to capture. 
in, in on screen which is the total hash value and the the payment and uh, when you want the payment to be to be the payment part to be um, processed another thing which is worth mentioning also is the authorization level within your businesses so although for example um when we have an account opened you have different signatories on their accounts and it is either either all to sign or both to sign however we give the opportunity for businesses to also assign different rights on accounts so you have the signing instructions the, 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 of the bank okay but you can build your own um uh, signing arrangements within within your organization and that can be different per organization per needs so the system administration the system administrator will have the right to assign different levels um within your 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 business for example you want um, a senior signatory um to upload only the file and then a manager to authorize the file Thus, you have dual control over the, the, the file being, um, the, the payments being processed. That you can also include. One last important information on batch payments is the dates. It is important. And this I must emphasize, especially because there are sensitive payments, like salary payments for me are the sensitive payments for your employees. So um, if you make a payment file this i gave it as an example um, and that is easy to follow and um, you will have a mixture within the batch file you have a mixture of bov to bov accounts and bov to other banks so the bov to bov will be executed on the day that you requested the file to be processed it's a it's a book payment then for other for other accounts they will be processed the following business day so payments are always on a D plus one, um, uh, maximum D plus one. As regards to creating a template through internet banking, um, uh, as I've said before, the, 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 the advantage of it is always that, especially when you make repetitive payments and make a number of payments, businesses found it very, very useful to create their own template so that all they have to change within the template would be the date and let's say the amount. Last but not least, mobile banking. Mobile, mobile banking, again, we have a number of functionalities within mobile banking, which can help you as well as internet banking um, make payments. And um, you have the mobile to mobile payments, which is very, very much um, popular. Bill payment facility as well. You can have it set up through mobile banking and you can also pay third party. Apart from the fact that you can also um, stop a card, you, can all, you will have also the software token, which is under the brand name of the BOV signatures. So, um, mobile banking like internet banking you can move money between accounts um, as well and as i said previously you can pay a bill or you can pay also a third part you can also create your own templates as well so um, that is also for recurring payments especially now um just an overview of um some payment functionality mobile to mobile payments free of charge, a maximum up to 1,000. So, um, for example, you want all you have to do is insert the mobile number in from your contact list and the amount. You can also press uh, near the three dotted lines where there is more, and there you can insert any payment details, specific payment details that you, you, that you want to insert and you authorize the payment. So there again, it is a very, very, very quick way of, 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 of making, ma making a payment. 
pay third party the same functionality that is that is on internet banking is also on mobile and there you can make any type of payment whether it is a sepa payment non sepa payments in different currencies you can do that via mobile mobile as well and these are the templates um there's they're quite easy to follow one by one to insert um the payment the payment details um yes we've started off the presentation with the cbm directive 19 that yes has made uh, and i believe will continue to help um customers move away from check payments as kenneth has so rightly pointed out check checks um uh, are, are 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 on the high side and we want we as a bank want to help you reduce as much checks as possible um the good news is that uh, in fact i i haven't shared um uh, st statistics yet of january but um over and above when we compare comparison with january of this year as last year we've also seen more reduction in checks which is good which is good and that is where we want to go i i can tell you uh, um, figures like 14 to 15 percent already a reduction which is on the positive note so so um so with a bit of more push i think we will get there um uh, these are the main highlights the main changes of the cbm directive 19 uh, I don't need to go to them. They're there. They're on the website of the Central Bank of the Malta Bankers Association as well. Um, please, however, my last point, my last closing um, note, again, payments business at bov.com. There is a lot of information on, inter on, on the website, all FAQs, how to use, how to download your mobile application, um guides as well however feel free to contact us we are here to support you we want you to pay less charges definitely i want you to pay less charges i i i don't like um charging for check payments check payments is one euro per check one euro 15 cents 75 cents 12 cents for 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 salary payments just think about that um that's all i have to say thank you very much for your attention thank you tonya for your very insightful presentation i will now open the floor to, to questions please feel free to post uh both on the q a that we have at the bottom that you should have at the bottom of your screen also you can post on our social media and we will be get, taking the questions from there so we should have um, the first question. Um, Richard, could you open please the... I think we're seeing some questions, uh, Daniel, coming in, which we can, can clearly reply to. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I think the so, first question, the first to question is, uh, Though digitalization is important, the reality is that many customers still use cash. However, the CBM Directive 19 has introduced various limitations with respect to common errors that are made, especially in writing of checks. How Thank you. You were, were breaking issues from, from. Sorry, we were, we're, yeah. we were breaking up a bit. Uh, uh -huh, Daniel, we're read it again, up. please. Read it a bit. Read it again, please, Daniel. Yes. Um, though digitalization is important, the reality is that many customers still use cash. However, the CBM Directive 19 has introduced various limitations with respect to common errors that are made, especially in the writing of checks. How will the bank be following through this transition period? 
Tonya, do you want to take this or shall I answer it? I mean, I can answer this. I mean, intrinsically, um, uh, you're right. We still have, and this was highlighted um, in a number of reports, that we still have quite a significant usage of cash and checks in our economy. But I think the uh, thrust of today's presentation, and I think even the National Trust as well, is that we start shifting payments to, to digital. Undoubtedly, as Tonya highlighted in her presentation, you know, the CBM directive is, has been introduced as well to strengthen the uh, reduction in the usage of checks in, in our economy. Clearly, when it comes to um, check payments, there are certain standards that need to be followed. Um, when it comes to the details of the pay, when it comes to the words and figures of the check, when it comes to the signing and the endorsement of the check on the back, I mean, clearly checks today are uh, cannot be paid um, or, or, or uh, um, um, be in, in, a, in an odd or, or the state because they are only checks. So it is only the PE that can deposit the check in his account, as was a practice beforehand where you put sign on the back and give the check to someone else. So that practice has been assisted with the introduction of only checks um, on, 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 on checkbooks. Again, and maybe linking even to the second question by 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 Jan Pagat. I mean, intrinsically, the uh, introduction of digital channels, and I think clients and and businessmen alike and business people alike are recognizing the efficiency with which they can execute payments. So when I, when I say efficiency, both the operational efficiency and the efficiency on the cost side as well, because they go hand in hand. Right? I think people are recognizing the importance of of. Uh, of using digital channels uh, to induce that efficiency in their business. In regards to mobile banking uptake, we have um, yeah. over 140,000 customers mm -hmm. that are using mobile banking uh, today. And uh, last year, I can say we had a 15% year on year increase in mobile banking. The take up on internet banking is stronger so far. It's in excess of 219,000 customers that today are using internet banking. Um, but we expect mobile banking to catch up because today mobile first is becoming um, you know, the mantra of many customers that are using their mobiles for payments and even using their mobiles as wallets as well with tokenized cards to pay with their mobile for goods and that. And, 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 mm -hmm. and other well, thing, I can it, it. Yeah, I, I, what I want to add as well, just for, for statistical purpose, for example, um, mobile to mobile payments have increased enormously as well, um, taking also into consideration that now with before previously um, there were even charges, charges and those we have removed. So the concept of um, uh, immediate payment, because that's a real time payment, mobile to mobile payments, have also increased um, the use of mobile. Um, another thing, although, and it's amazing when you see the difference between internet banking and mobile banking, although the mobile banking functionality is that there's less function as regards to payments as opposed to internet banking, but yes, the usage and the logins of, of that even exceed sometimes 2 million logins over, 2 million logins in a, in a month. So yes, it's it's first uh, mobile is first, and we hope to in the coming in the, in the coming months increase also further increase functionality with the mobile. Um, yeah, I would say I would say the uptake was for was really really good. It was really good. Um, uh, I can see another. Yes, question. about the concept of batch payments. Yeah, uh, batch yeah. payments, yes, of Karen Board, yes, batch payments, yes, you can batch salary, SEPA payments, non-SEPA payments, you, you, basically even what you call the regular payments, I'm, 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 I'm assuming the supplier type of payments, um, when you want to pay suppliers, yeah, why not, yeah, you can, you can, and again, may I emphasize on, 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 on charges as opposed to check charges, one euro, as opposed to salary payments, 12 cents per payment, regular payments, 15 cents up to 1,000, <laughs> 75 cents over, over 1,000. So do contact us, payments, business at bov.com. Okay. 
So, so I think what we need to add, Daniel, if I may, is that uh, clearly the bank will be the please invited to provide um, clients, you know, with the right guidance and instruction on how to set this up. Because obviously there's a reference to training. We will be pleased to provide that to yeah. uh, the business owners or the staff members on the way that they, they can process batch payments for both salaries and even supplier payments as for that or ordinary payments, day-to-day -day payments. Yes, um, there was another question I think it's for Keith. A COVID-19 has accelerated the changes towards digitalization. How will the bank be promoting further the uptake of digital tools among consumers in the upcoming period? I think here, um, you know, my reply to this is I think we are doing this live now. <laughs> And these are the typical initiatives that the bank is organizing to uh, um, foster increased awareness and enhance the uptake of digital means of payment. The bank has uh, fully fledged information on its website as well, in so far as the use of its digital, uh, digital channels. And I reiterate Tonya's invitation to customers, you know, to seek information on the way they can uh, induce um, digital uh, payments, methods of payments within their business, with the payments business of the, of the bank. Yeah, we can also organize um, meeting, meetings as well, team meetings, Zoom meetings, whatever. And we can train you or also guide you through um, how to set it up. I'm seeing the, the another... Um, yes, about the... Another question was about the signature in the Kronto QR image, uh, could you explain further on how these are created? Okay, okay. Um, as, I, as I've said, the, um, actually authorizing a payment will need the signature too. Um, when you use Kronto, when you click on Kronto on your mobile, um, it's, it's, a, it's an image, it's an image, the QR code, Kronto is the QR code. It's an image which you take, um, you, you, you zoom on, and um, a security code is, is displayed. That then you will have to enter that security code on internet banking. And there, the authorization of a payment takes place. Again, I mean, there are the guides on internet banking, or else you can, come, you can reach out and contact us. We'll, give, we'll, we'll call you and we'll guide you exactly step by step how it works. Even if you want to download your mobile applications, maybe you haven't at the moment, don't worry, call us and we'll assist you um, until you're actually um, activated. So we don't just leave you there, just, just um, walk you through, do it there and then and, and get activated so that you can start using mobile mobile banking. Um, other question regarding the SEPA yes, payment? There, was a, there is a question about SEPA payment. Uh, should we opt for a SEPA payment for reference? What are, so the regarding the SEPA payment, should we opt? Should we yeah. Yes, okay. and what are the charges oh. for a single SEPA payment? Perfect, perfect. Okay, so um, a single payment. A single, if, you, if you make a simple single payment through internet banking, where the beneficiary is also a Bank of Aleta account holder, that is free of charge. Now, if you make a SEPA payment to uh, another local bank uh, or, or, or within SEPA, up to the value of 1,000 is one euro, over the value of 1,000 is four euro. However, however, and this is where we stress the fact how important it is that if you have a number of payments, you batch them. Because then by batching payments, you reduce your processing time, reduce costs to 15 cents and 75 cents respectively. So that, th those are the, 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 the bank charges, 15 cents for processing a payment up to 15, up to 1,000 euros, sorry, apologies for that, and, uh, and 75 cents for a payment over 1,000, if you batch your payments. I think I've answered that. Any more questions? No, I no. think we have answered. <laughs> I think we've that. covered all the questions. Tonya, Richard here, I have uh, just a, a comment. Um, yes, sure. Because I have uh, a lot of clients uh, who are uh, asking about batch payments and so on. And I would like to inform that 
uh, many software companies, local ones, are integrating your XML facility into their software. So it's good that uh, whoever is interested can contact his uh, software supplier because he might have this uh, functionality already. Um, good point, Richard. Um, uh, so if we opt, if the, 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 the company, the business opts, for especially the SEPA file formats and XML is not as easy as what I have presented here. Yes, by all means. There are a number of service providers locally who provide the service of, um, of preparing the SEPA file format and preparing um, uh, the, the, the file, uh, which is compliant to, to our file formats uh, of SEPA. Yes, you're right. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tonya. Thank you, Kenneth. It's been um, a pleasure. And for, for the also very fruitful Q&A session at the end, besides your presentation and insights. Uh, Joe. OK, thank you again. I must thank Kenneth and Tonya. Uh, presentation with regards to Tonya and Kenneth for his introduction. Um, obviously, I would also like to thank Daniel, who has made all this to happen, and Richard, who was with us also. Um, obviously, digitalization is here to stay, and together with the green economy, digitalization is being seen as a key enabler to uh, achieve the targets that the European Union has set for the coming years. Uh, in fact, uh, digitalization is being seen Deal and uh, on my head, a vision for Europe, Europe's digital transformation by 2030. Uh, the Commission has, in fact, proposed a digital compass for the European Union's digital decade that evolves around four cardinal points first, government, skills, infrastructures, and business. And we, obviously, as businesses, must strive to continue moving forward. Um, as indicated by Daniel in his introduction earlier on, and also by Kenneth in his uh, introduction. Nineteen has accelerated the pace of the disruptions at certain levels, such as, for example, in our supply chains, uh, but has also given us the opportunity to innovate as we had to adapt ourselves to new realities. With regards to Gozo and us ourselves at the Gozo Business Chamber, we see that digitalization can be an important tool to surpass difficulties that Gozo is normally associated with. It's double insularity, which brings very big difficulties to us. We believe that digitalization is the future and the answer to our IPM. I also believe that the difficulties that are generally associated with micro, small and medium enterprises can be surpassed with digitalization. However, we as businesses have to adapt and learn. That is why it is important for businesses to see the goals of business chamber as their reference in this respect and seek membership to the chamber as a means to this end. We will continue to do our best to offer opportunities for training as we will continue to bring the new realities that challenge us and the future that brings with it. Um, again, I will thank you all for being with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you, Joe. We now come to the end of our webinar. I would like to thank you all for accepting our invitation to join us today. I sincerely hope that this webinar has been fruitful to all those who have participated. I would like to thank once again the BOV officials, Tony Naudi, Kenneth Farouja, and also uh, Victoria Axopardi and Mark Shikuna Bartoli, who were as well, assistants during the, the run-up and the preparation to this event. A special note of thanks goes to Richard Gregg, who was our technical coordinator, and my team here at the Chamber. Digitalization is here to stay, and it is important for businesses to keep abreast of the solutions that are being offered 
in order to reach and to match customer expectations. Finally, I would now like to invite you to continue following us on our web page and Facebook page. And thanks once again for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good day.